Hello, Josh. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I would like to welcome, you are a funk, jazz, and all-out cool band from Denver, Colorado, to World Exposure with Cher Dial. Welcome. Hi. Josh. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And now, you are Josh, and you are actually one of the founding members of the band Analog Sun. Yep, uh, me and my longtime friend Jordan Linnett, who plays guitar, uh, we started it about a year ago, a year and a half. So you started the band about a year ago? I was going to ask for maybe a brief history about it. I know you guys both grew up in Missouri. Yeah, yeah we grew up in Columbia, Missouri. Uh, we met when we were about 12 or 13 wow. and started shredding. And, um, you know, by the end of high school, or we were playing all the bars and clubs in Columbia. It's a little college town. So, you know, there's a lot of kids out there and that's kind of where we got a taste for it. Uh-huh. Um, then we both got music scholarships to University of Denver. Oh, nice. Um, so that's how we ended up out here. And, you know, that was a while ago. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, like 17 uh, years ago, have you guys been together? Or? Yeah, I mean, we've been playing for, yeah, like 17 years. Wow. Um, and, um, but Analog Sun really came about. Uh, our other band, Kinetics, wasn't touring as much. And I had just done the New Master Sounds record, which is this punk band from England that's really good. And um, their keyboard player, Joe Tatton, was just in town. And I was like, man, we should record some tunes like we, you know, like we used to do with these, this really funky guy from England. Right, you know? uh-huh. Um, so we called up Mike Marlier, who is a professor of jazz at University of Denver. And we're like, hey, let's do a little session. And we laid down like three or four songs, and it was pretty funky um, and then like not too long later the Shady Horns from Lettuce were playing in Denver and they were hanging out at Jordan's house because um, Jordan used to ha live in this place with like five other people that was like one block from Cervantes Masterpiece Ballroom which is oh, okay. a really awesome venue in Denver uh -huh. um, and so everyone would just go there after the shows and jam and hang out and they were kind of just, you know, what are you guys up to? And we're like, oh, well, we just recorded some funk tunes. <laughs> and um, they were interested in checking it out, and they liked the music, and they got on it. And so that was like the first, that was the first thing. That was like Analog Sun. It was like Shady Horns, Joe Tatton, me and Jordan, and our uh, professor on drums. Wow, that is amazing. Right, and how did you come up with the name Analog Sun? Hmm, well... It comes from a few places, you know, like, um, but the main thing is really it's just a homage to where the music that we play comes from and how it was recorded and, um, you know, funk music came around in like the 60s and 70s and all of it was recorded on the tape machines and um, basically that's the sound of right. the genre. So... We try to stay true to that. We record to, you know, tape machines and we use analog mixing consoles and we basically are trying to stay true to that sound. Right. Well, still adding a modern flair to it. And we felt like, you know, analog sun, like that's us. Like we came after, but we yeah. want homage to it, you know, and, and try to just help our sound really pay homage to the people that came before us, like Herbie Hancock or Parliament or James Brown or people like that. Oh, exactly, exactly. And so do you, when you say a tape machine, is that a reel-to-reel -reel tape? Yeah, here, check it out. Yeah. Oh, that's bizarre. At, at the studio right now. Oh, yeah, that's neat. That's a real -reel. Beautiful studio. Oh, okay. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Oh, thanks. Now, are you in Denver? Uh, we're in unincorporated Jefferson County. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I know. It's beautiful. I, uh, I lived in Denver for a long time, and then my son was born up in Steamboat Springs. And then I took my son back about, um, I, I left Steamboat when he was, like, a little baby, and I took him back when he was 16 years old. He's like, I was born here? Why did you yeah. leave? <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, but now, uh, about the uh, your debut release now was in 200, 2014, mm -hmm. and I read where you used Kickstarter. 
Yeah, we did a Kickstarter and campaign. And how did that? That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, we got a lot of support from uh, fans, friends, and family, and we were able to raise the money to basically pay for the production of the record. You know, we still had to invest quite a bit of our own money uh, into the project, but it basically we couldn't have done it without the help of everybody else, and that was kind of what launched the band. And um, you know, it was really it was really successful. You know, we we made vinyl records, we made. Uh, a sweet album and it was beautiful really cool. artwork. Yeah, uh, Belinda did the art. Um, she's an amazing tattoo artist, and she did the art for our, our new record as well. Now, um, let's talk about your latest release that is going to be released on March seventh, and it is called uh, Stomp and Shout. Mm -hmm. And now, how do, how has this music, if any, has evolved from your first recording? Well, it's just as collaborative, but I think the main evolution was literally those first group sessions were, you know, we had never even played any of the songs before. We, mm. we just got in there and kind of made some stuff up and it was super loose. Oh, this is our little mascot here. <laughs> Uh, we are World Exposure, and he flies in from all over the world, W. Ed Poser and his little sidekick, Mini P, and he brings us uh, questions from fans all over the world. And this is a question from a fan, and they want to know if you could perform at any festival or any show in the world, what would it be? <laughs> oh, it's tough. I'd have to say... You know, the easy answer would be, I would love to just play Red Rocks. With really? Oh, yeah, huh? That would be kind of a dream come true. Have you ever gone outside of your genre and sang any other kind of music? Uh, like with this band or just in general? Just in general. Oh, yeah. We do um, all sorts of stuff. I'm going on tour with, like, an Americana group called Fox Street All-Stars, uh, doing a California thing in March. Um, you know, Kinetics was like rock, jam rock, electronica, yeah. and that was me and Jordan's, um, our other band, and uh, playing a Red Hot Chili Peppers cover band. What is it like now that uh, Colorado has become a legal state? Oh, or, it's, it's awesome. Is it awesome? Now, yeah. can, you, can have, you just smoke in a closet? It's, or? it's not, you know, it's not like that. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure the clubs are not, not yeah, like, really. really keen on a ton of smoking inside, just like anywhere, you know, cigarettes or anything. Um, but I think oh, it's awesome. True. And, you know, no reason to put people in jail for smoking a little weed, you know? So yeah. I, think it's, I think it's great. And I think... Um, you know, being able to go to a store and buy some weed food or some, you know, some type of food that'll make you feel better. You don't even have to smoke. You don't have to deal with shady exactly. drug dealers or anything. I think it's way awesome. And I think, you know, I wish the whole country would just follow suit. And, yeah. you know, as long as you teach, you know, personal responsibility, that's really all it is. It's like, don't be an idiot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I think it's coming to that. You know, I, I hope the whole uh, the whole country does go that way. You know, yeah, it'd be a lot. You know, a lot easier for people to. Yeah, a lot um, more chill. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, now where can uh, fans find all your music and information on Analog Sun? Um, uh, our website analogsun.com. Um, has our music up there. It is soon to have our second album up there right now. You know, this week it's still just the first record, but starting next week we'll be able to stream our new album on our website and you can find it on iTunes. Um, yeah, so. Oh, well, yeah. that's exciting. And gosh, I wish you nothing but continued success. You're Thanks such so an much. interesting guy to talk with. <laughs> and I, I love your studio and I love the way you're recording and uh, what a cool thing, really. Thank you so much. So happy, happy we could do this. Yeah, and once again, um, thank you to Josh and Analog Sun for joining us here on World Exposure with Cher Dial today. <laughs> World Exposure with Cher Dial will be right back after these messages. Hi. 
I'm John Maravellas, and if you're looking to get fit and improve your health, it's as easy as three simple steps. 60% nutrition, 40% working out, and 100% commitment. That's Fit for Life. What makes Fit for Life different? We specialize in getting your metabolism higher, even when you're not working out. Through our scientific and time-tested techniques, we've integrated a 30-minute workout that gives you the benefit of multiple hour sessions. Unlike other fitness studios, we combine strength training to tone, cardio to burn off fat from your stomach and hips, and nutrition planning and consulting to accelerate your results and make them permanent. Hi, I'm Allison. I took the Fit for Life Challenge and lost 65 pounds. And I'm Christy. I did too, and I lost 100 pounds. I back my promise of unparalleled fitness with an unconditional 90-day money-back guarantee. If you're not completely satisfied with your results, you don't pay a dime. Call me today and I get fit for, for life. life. There you are. All right. I touch you down. Oh, I'm so guys. happy to meet you guys. Make a connection. You too. Definitely. And uh, you no, are no, Seven no, Horse, no, and no, you are no, Phil no, Levitt, plays no, drums, no, and also no, Joe Calio. Close. And close and close. <laughs> uh, it's Phil Levitt. He's the he'd be the lead singer and drummer, and Joey Calio. I would be the uh, guitar player and sometimes a Skype master. <laughs> oh, the Skype master. <laughs> yeah, I'm turning up the volume. There we go. That's better. Cool. Okay, and you are um, you are actually a blues, rock, country-infused duo, and you were also featured on the movie soundtrack. Uh, Wolves of Wall Street, and you are a seven horse, and you are calling us from Seattle, Washington. Yes. All correct. Oh, that's so nice. I'm so happy uh, to meet you. I just want to give you a note here before we start, and that is about your group, Dada. Now, my brother-in-law is a music fanatic. I mean, I'm talking like from A to Z. He loves music. So I was talking to him the other day, and I said, what are your top three albums? And you, your band is one of his top three bands of all time out of all bands. And he is a aficionado of music, so I thought that was really cool. I <laughs> Yes, very, you know? So uh, I just thought I'd bring that up because I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, now, you were with the uh, amazing group Dada, and then you branched off to do your own project. And I read where you said you buried your musical past to start this and was that difficult for you after all the success you had had with the band Dada? Uh, I wouldn't say it was difficult. I think we were you know really looking to change direction and uh, play some different kinds of music that we couldn't really uh, get to in, uh, in, in Dada for you know, the, the course of the, Dada had a particular sound that was really well defined and we wanted to go off in a different direction, so it's- Uh huh, and, and how did you come up with the name Seven Horse and then how did you two decide you were gonna do this on your own? Well, I'll, I'll take the first, uh, take the second question first. Uh, <laughs> it was really a, a, an act of you know, necessity slash desperation. Uh, after 20 years uh, with uh, Dada, we found ourselves kind of at a brick wall, unable to uh, get a new record together, unable to really move forward as a band. And we were out on the road occasionally playing gigs, which was great, and uh, playing all of our old music. Yeah, did you did you grow up in Chicago also? No, I grew up in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. The generation after the Chicago, uh, everybody moved to Vegas. Uh, you know, my dad and uh, my grandfather, and uh, everybody ended up in Vegas in the 60s, and uh, that's where I was born. 
I see. I grew up in Chicago. That's why I was just wondering why. So. Yeah, exactly. And Joey, what about you? My family that I know of. Um, uh, I grew up in the Bay Area, born in San Francisco. Uh huh. I, you know, moved down to Los Angeles when I was a teenager and I'm with a rock band and a band, just the typical kind of thing. Eating, you know, hot dogs and tuna, tuna fish out of a can <laughs> you know, for a long time. Uh -huh. Couch surfing, as they say, you know that thing, and then uh, till finally, uh, you know, got something started with Dada after a few years. Right, and and on this new project, is it true that you played, wrote, and arranged songs over the phone? Well, we do that because you know we live. I, I live down in LA now, and Joey's up here in Seattle, so we end up sending each other a lot of uh, little voice memos or lyrics via iPhone. You know, the technology is. Here's Cash. Oh, I love uh, Cash. Oh, is he cute? Does he go on tour with you? <laughs> well, I was going to ask you about, just say in the last 20 years, how the music business has changed and what is your perspective on it now? I mean, what is the thing you like about it the most and what is the thing you don't like about it the most? Because it's just completely different and it's, you know, you got to go with the changes, I guess, you know? You have no choice. Yeah, you have no choice. You're absolutely right. The business uh, it has completely flipped upside down. <laughs> well, you guys are so much fun. Uh, did you used to like hang out with other musicians and just jam? I mean, were you those kind of guys that hang, hung out in LA with musicians and just you know? LA, LA, LA. We've never been. Have we ever been part of this? No, I don't think so. No? Uh, we're, 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 no, we're not uh, hangout kind of guys. We're, we're real uh, tribal. We've always been, I mean, we are in our little world, and uh, we, it, probably to our detriment. But um, who's that? Is there somebody coming? Oh, this is our this is our little uh, spaceman, W. Ed Poser. Of course, we are World Exposure here, and uh, he flies in from all over the world. And uh, he just flew in from New York City, where I just recently interviewed Frank Palangi, and he's a rock and roller out of New York, and he will be on our show, World XCD, along with you. So they have a, a question from a fan, and they want to ask it to you. Okay. I be watching TV when I was a little kid. Oh, I know. Right? <laughs> oh gosh. It says, um, you have toured everywhere and what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you either on stage or that you've seen from stage? <laughs> no way. The craziest thing was crazy. Crazy. Nope. Yeah. The craziest thing on stage? Uh, I've imagined you've seen it all. <laughs> on stage there's been a lot of crazy things. I don't know about on stage, uh, No. You know, Stuff will break, stuff will fall over. That's kind of crazy. I, I smashed uh, Mike Gurley's guitar one time by accident. Oh my God. Uh, all kinds of people putting things to their body. Like, and and yeah. It was colorful that day. It was fun. Yeah, no kidding. How fun. How fun. Well, what, a, what an amazing career you've had and have now. And I'm just so um, excited. What about touring now? Are you going to be touring anywhere through uh, Chicago, Minneapolis? Anywhere? Those are always, those are always thoughts for us. Exactly. Yes. We have plans to get out. I'm worried we're making a record right now, so that's going to take us through the, the end of the summer. And hopefully we'll get, we'll get out in the fall. If not the fall, we probably won't come to Minneapolis in the winter. We probably would wait until <laughs> Really? <Island's> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or Chicago. <laughs> Winter. And every time we go in the winter, we go, why are we here in the winter, right? Uh-huh, exactly. Yeah, that sounds fun. Well, once again, I just want to, you know, thank you guys. You are a blast. You are so much fun, you know? Sure. Yeah. Here, 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 coffee. Oh, really? <laughs> coffee and an yeah. edible, please. Well, listen, oh. guys, thank you so much. You know what? It was such a pleasure. I mean, you have no idea how much it was fun talking to you. And um, I just wish you nothing but continued, continued success. Hey, everybody, this is Phil Levin. And Joey Gallia. For the band Seven Horse and Cash. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to World Exposure with Cher Doc. It was such a pleasure, and I hope you guys keep in touch with us and let us know what's going on. Pretty well.
I really hope you do. It was it was such a pleasure, and uh, you have no, no idea how much I appreciate you taking the time today. Thanks so much. All right. Well, thank you, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Nice Bye. job, guys. Thank you so much. Hair trends, hair transformation, and hair tranquility begin at Hair Trinity. Hair Trinity Salon, located in New Brighton, offers you elegant, sophisticated, and business stylings to crazy, sexy, cool. Provided by certified stylists that help you create your own style in your image because one style doesn't fit all. Affordably priced for all hair and types. Hair Trinity Salon, located at 1437 Silver Lake Road in New Brighton. Welcome back to World Exposure with Cher Dial. Now it's time to rock the world with L.A. Nick. I just got the Fukushima uh, station here in Japan, and uh, the nuclear power plant's not far from here. I'm, I'm only reading 0.09 right now on my Geiger counter, which is pretty low. Um, I'm gonna try to get to the station gate today and uh, try to get inside. This was supposed to be the trip of a lifetime. It would be our fifth anniversary together, away on a nearly two week trip Instead, this was my reality. 60 pounds of camera equipment for 10 straight days following this asshole. You guys speak English at all? Do you speak English? No English? No English. Man, nobody speaks English. Speak English? You speak English? No English? Man. <laughs> Striking out here, man. Me, no English. No, come on, ask me. Hey, let me ask you a question. How far, how far away is... No? I'm trying to go to Fukushima. So, will this get me there? Can't do the steps. Oh, I'm on the bullet train the Shinkasken bullet train and I'm heading to Fukushima. Just that easy? Just... That easy, man. Nobody asked me why I was going there or nothing. I said, I want to go to the new Fukushima power plant. They said, just get on train 20. So, here I am. I spent my whole life avoiding things that were bad for my body. I walked away from the microwave when it was running to avoid giving myself a brain tumor. I've never smoked. I run out of the bathroom after I spray hairspray so that I don't breathe it in. But there I was, following this moron into the most radioactive place on earth. I just got the Fukushima uh, station here in Japan and uh, the nuclear power plant's not far from here. I'm, I'm only reading 0.09 right now on my Geiger counter, which is pretty low. Um, I'm gonna try to get to the station gate today and uh, try to get inside. So they told me these are, I'm not sure if the guy said five or 15 or 50, because I can't understand Japanese that well, but these are, I, I'm guessing what it looks at, they're five, five or 15 gallon tanks of waste that they took out of the bottom, I think he said the bottom floor of, of this building right back here. Um, they're storing them here and they're shipping all this stuff away by trucks. I think it's sandy, oh, it's like sandy water. And uh, I just recalibrated my Geiger counter and uh, this is reading, 58.6 and that's i think that sounds really high to me and uh i'm kind of worried get out of the shadow get out of the shadow i can't tell the shadow it's right there, okay, right there. So we're heading into the fukushima power plant this is a tunnel that goes into the main plant and uh I had to pull, I didn't actually pull my seats. I called them, told them I was the mayor of Minneapolis in, in Minnesota. And uh, 
they, they, they granted me a one day pass, so we're gonna head on in and see what's going on. This was the bike parking lot at, for the plant here. When the plant meltdown happened, all these bikes got left and they've been here ever since. They're, you can tell they're all brand new bikes, but uh, I mean, they're, they're buried under weeds now. And it's just amazing that all these people got evacuated and they left all their bikes sitting here at the plant. So I'm are actually pretty nice bikes. This is a pretty nice bike right here. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're five deep, six deep. It, it's just amazing, amazing sight. I'm at the out, outer reactor wall. It's a 240 foot high wall, man. It's crazy that there's this much concrete can be even poured. And I guess this is where the first containment spill, the water spilled over this wall. All these white lines are runoff. You can see it goes all the way down. It's, uh, man, it's amazing. Amazing, amazing sight to see. We're following here at the, at the main entrance, the main tunnel of the reactor building. Uh, my heart's racing a million miles a minute. I had this cough and I can't, I can't shake it. <coughs> I don't know where it's from, but it's really starting to affect me a lot and we're really having a really hard time breathing. Maybe it's just because I'm nervous or something, but we're gonna head on in. I'm really, really nervous. Hello? On oh, my uh, yes, um, I have an uh, appointment with Mr. Karoki. What is your name? Uh, my name is L L L A Nick. This is a maximum security facility. You must have your paperwork. Yes, I have my documents. Yes. Enter through gate two. Okay. So now I'm on the I'm on the I guess they call it the top floor of the reactor building. We're going to go into the reactor room. Um, this is like they want me to get suited up here and then they're going to put me a stage two what they call stage two suiting where they tape up my hands and tape everything up put a gas mask on me um they won't want any cameras past this particular point don't know why but they won't so i was going to try to hide my cell phone maybe get some cell phone video but we'll see what happens i'm going to go ahead in now what 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 no, 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 I, I, I want this off. I'm having a good hair day. First time in two weeks, let alone. So sick. Okay. <coughs> Going to Fukushima was the dumbest thing I ever did, man. Well, next to downloading a fake app for Geiger Counter. <laughs> Can't believe I downloaded an app for Geiger Counter for 1995. It's not even real. It was just a fake spoof thing. I'm such a jackass, man. Ah.